happy morning everybody a great afternoon and a wonderful evening everything that exists out there is called consciousness there is individual consciousness there is group consciousness and then there is consciousness at different levels jivatma paramatma parabrahma there are different levels of it but everything is that is there that exists out there Yeah, there is small, some kind of logical structuring for us to understand this better. Consciousness is awareness. Awareness is deep inside. It's a thought. So it is. the thought is that mind when it is individualized for ourselves an individual consciousness which is about ourselves where this material reality is one of it it's not the whole of the individual consciousness that anandamaya kosha which is that atman is that individual consciousness of which this material reality is one of it so talking about this material reality then of course we have then we're talking using the words conscious mind subconscious mind and conscious mind so we're using the words so the conscious mind which is about this material reality of our individual consciousness which is existing forever then conscious mind and subconscious and conscious are there within this reality so the conscious mind we are saying is anything that is derived out of this material reality you know this event that event right now this workshop subconscious mind is anything that is repeated it is just still part of this material reality or it has memories coming from the various other realities of our own individual consciousness to understand this if the mind is outside the body and the material reality is everything defined through this body so the mind is outside the body and the imprints are carrying forward and they are coming from outside the body and this key this is also understood well when they have done this research every cell if you are made up of cells and the cells do not have their brain in the center of the cell which is the nucleus what contrarily they thought the DNA is where the DNA is the center of the cell in the nucleus and then they thought originally DNA is where everything is coming from so that's the master but they did an experimentation where they removed the DNA as part of this epigenetic experimentation the center they removed the center nucleus and the cell did not die they're looking at it and the cell is communicating through the membrane cell membrane is got the brain from a cell perspective 
the cell membrane is where it's got receptors it is receiving from the environment so if you're made up of cells and if you're receiving information from the environment based on the type of information it is receiving the cell is acting to extend itself to live its life so if the just from that perspective if the inf if the cell is living and not living based on the information that is receiving from its membranes which is external to the cell environment and we are made up of these cells and so if the information is coming from externally and then which is causing us to live or not live so that is then this infinite field of quantum field is infinite so with information is coming from the external to the cell which is from this whole energy field and is coming from there then it has to be that it need not be that our individual body this consciousness this body is only one for carrying our memories our memories could be carried forward maybe in multiple realities because external and then what would it stop from doing it only into one entity why would not be multiple when they do the heart transplants if the memories are going in from one person to another person where are the memories stored so there's got to be somewhere time and again in the research then heart transplants are done and the original persons the persons whose heart has been given to somebody else some of their habits immediately if they didn't have any food liking at all before but now they suddenly start liking say this junk food or should not use the word junk food but what about this fast food yes there's still maybe some junk food it's a different thing so they suddenly show show the craving so it's, it's again another experimentation where it is shown that suddenly these individuals develop memories and habits of someone else when they did this heart transplantation so it is coming from somewhere So the consciousness, our individual consciousness, potentially is existing in multiple places. That's why quantum physics says there is this universe and then multiverse. There are multiverses that exist because it's beyond this universe, and all are there. So there is Jivatma, Paratmatma, Parabrahma. You could you could visualize that way, a few levels of it. But all of whatever it is, is consciousness is there. Everything that exists. and in that there is an individualized consciousness which is us and one of that is this material reality this body that we have taken we are here and now within that there is conscious mind subconscious mind and consciousness the conscious mind is everything that we are talking about everything that is derived in this material reality subconscious mind is about this as well as potentially it's got the memories of the of about ourselves from other existence of ourselves our individual consciousness which is where it is leading to a lot of reincarnations and more reincarnation is one thing but there is also other other areas of it so things that we do not know potentially from our past but then it's the recorded it is there because the whole mind is coming from outside from this field part of is still part of the consciousness right it's still part of the consciousness but it's coming from the field it is there at an individualized version of it as an energy that is spread all over in this entire universe that ultimately everything is energy and those thoughts when they crystallize be absorbed by somebody then becomes matter so this conscious mind and the subconscious mind which is part of our individual consciousness but the subconscious mind potentially is extending not only this material reality but also several others where suddenly we start remembering subconscious not everything that we remember is there
but related. Unconscious is there, which is about that thing that is beyond our consciousness, individual consciousness that we pull out from the entire universe. For example, when people have an experience of, they say, I'm becoming, I feel like I am just the light, nothing more. I'm in this meditation experience where I, there is everything of me is dropped completely. And we have that transcendental experience where I'm completely dropped and I, I am just the light. There is no boundary. There is no this, there is no you, there is no me. It's all just the light. which is the real experience of this total existence where you, there's no separation of individual, yourself, other person. I'm there and experiencing you, I'm experiencing me. Both I'm experiencing. That's a level of consciousness. But I'm seeing you, I'm seeing me. But I experience that I know that you and me are same. That is one level. I don't see you and me separate. We're all the same. Another level. And then I don't even see this something called entity. It's just the light. It's another level. Jivatma, Paramatma, Parabrahma. You could think that way. So coming back to this individual consciousness that we are here, we are into four states. We, this consciousness, we are, as an individual, we're going into these four states. We are always oscillating these four states. Wakeful state, sleep, deep sleep, sleep is sleep, deep sleep state, dream sleep state, it's called dream state. <coughs> deep sleep state where you don't have dreams. And fourth one is this transcendental, transcendental state, which is where we are beyond the body in a meditation. Uh, sometimes in nature, you just gaze into the nature and then you go into a trance, what we call a trance, or the altered state, we don't realize your body. So we are into these four states. And clearly, our sleep, which is spanning two states, dream sleep, uh, dreams and dreamless sleep, the REM, is an important part of our life. So we've got to have a very good sleep. At the basic of it, we've got to have not necessarily the long sleep, but have a good sleep. A sleep where it is useful. A sleep where it is useful it is what it is meant to be and these thoughts are going into the sleep state too you know that the research is that you know the mind is not fully the mind is still active in sleep state you might have read so meditation is absolutely making our sleep better and better and better Meditation is taking us into the deeper tips, deep, the deep REM sleep states easily so that you are absolutely where you are repairing, you are healing yourself. And also in a dream sleep state, which is almost like that alpha and theta states where we are getting some kind of insights. We are experiencing outer reality again, just like the transcendental experience, what we are experiencing something different in Dreams also are experiencing something out of reality. Just experience it. It's like another life. We are experiencing here. We are experiencing there. We don't have to perhaps analyze too much, but it's just another level of experiencing that everything that exists. Meditation is making them very clear and clear and clear so that you can actually experience it better. You remember, you come out and say, oh, wow, I've seen today Alp Mountains. So this meditation that we do is giving us the transcendental experience when we're going into that. So as we meditate, as we're touching into the core, 
So we're going into this transcendental experience, which means that we are not body, we are beyond the body. So one, we're experiencing that feel that consciousness of us, which is larger than this body consciousness, right? We're experiencing that, where we're merging in from individual to that universal to the multiversal consciousness. That's one. Meditation is getting our sleeps better, making our dreams more clearer. The meditation, of course, is getting us into the REM sleep state at will very quickly in many times. And then, of course, because we are regularly meditating, we become so self-aware, so our wakeful state also becomes very, very productive. Our wakeful state, where we again spending a good amount of time, and because meditation is making us very, very self-aware, so we are in the moment. And so getting... To be in the moment, for long enough to be in the moment, continuously, and then to be having those very effective, wakeful dream sleep states, or any of these four states, we need to do our meditation long enough. The longer you are, the longer you are going away from the body and then become one with this whole existence. And the more you become of that existence, because this is the natural, that's how the nature works, right? Whoever you are with for a longer time, then you become of that. So the more time we spend in that, the more we become that. And then the more you become that, the more you have a, a beautiful experience of these four states. So dear friends, can we go into this meditation once again? Relax yourself. Sit comfortably. And make a strong commitment to yourself that you are going in and completely forgetting about yourself. We are into the second week. We are coming to the end of the second week. Many of the past participants have experienced and then told us that after two weeks, they start seeing quite a bit of changes. After three weeks, significant changes. Of course, we're going to run some self-assessment surveys this time too. If you're not experiencing anything as a newcomer, hold on. The process is right. The process is that you are disengaging from your body this life and then you are engaging with something that is larger, much larger than we can ever imagine. So we will understand this. Yes, I hear. So, we, we will, we'll, so that's why we are doing 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. On Sunday evenings we are doing even longer meditation. That's the only thing they learned from Patrisa. The long, however much long you can go, go, meditate. Of course, understand the science behind it, understand the experiences so that you know how to navigate yourself. That's very easy. I keep reading, that's why. Yes. Thank sir. you very much. It's beautiful. Carry on. Thank Lovely. You, I missed you yesterday. S sit comfortably. So we learned about how meditation is eliminating stress and so in general it is removing all the ailments that are caused by the stress. And in the process of healing, meditation is reducing the physical pain so we can actually also start tolerating it more. That means that we can attend to our daily wake, uh, wakeful chores more because the pain, you know, anybody was experiencing these chronic pains, many, many people experience it. More so with the people in IT industry. Spondylitis, back aches are so common. That's health. So we looking at health. And one of the reasons how health is also changing is around this genetic expression. So our thoughts create reality and our feelings and thoughts create reality. So the more heightened feeling and thought we have, And with the cell which is taking, relying on environment to constantly receive information, and that environment is filled with this energy and information that is filled with nothing but the thought and feeling which is going and then putting that energy into it as information. 
And so self deceive that. And then if the cell is receiving that, okay, I'm healed. I'm loving my body. I'm doing this trekking in Himalayas. And then I'm enjoying it. And then if that's the feeling that the cell is receiving, that's the uh, information is receiving from the environment. Then it is saying, okay, so it is taking that and it is expressing a new <clears throat> protein in the genes. There is a project called Human Genome Project. It's a fascinating to hear. So they, when they did this project, they wanted to find out and construct all the genes of the human genome. They expected that there are 120,000 odd proteins in the body, so they expected that there will be 120,000 genes they'll find. One gene, one protein, because they always been that we are hereditary, everything comes from the gene in a fixed way. And so one gene, one protein. But when the project finished, they only found 23,000 genes, apparently. It was not made big. Because it is confused, science is confused at that point and say, how come it's only found that many? So each gene is expressing different ways, different protein. And where is that link? That link is this epigenetics is now trying to determine that. And the link is that you are receiving this information from the cell membranes. And so it is not from the core. The gene is in the nucleus. It is coming from the cell membrane and then depending on, <coughs> excuse me, depending on what thought it is receiving, what information it is receiving the cell receptors are taking it and then sending it to process inside <clears throat> and a certain type of a different protein is produced that protein is going in and saying I want a feel good factor if you needed to have a specific cell to be reconstructed from the protein and the appropriate protein is produced so that that cell whether it's a skin cell if it's got a repair that patches due to sugar or whatever that has happened, which otherwise are never going away, but now they start going away because it is eaten away, but now it's going away because this body has gotten that thing from the master who is saying that I've got a beautiful body and I'm going to utilize, I'm using it and then I'm traveling all around. Whatever is your dream and visualization that you construct, we're going to learn this in fourth week and manifestation and how to visualize. But the point is that with our heightened thought and feeling, the body is regenerating itself in a significant way because genes are producing new protein. Because everything is around the protein to construct new cells. And so it is being determined. It is a lot of research happened and then it is there. If you go into, you can use the word epigenetics, EPI genetics. And there's a lot of research. And then another website, ions.org, ions.org. A lot of research, scientific research around meditations. One more very important website that can have a lot of scientific correlation, Exploration of Consciousness Institute, evocinstitute.org. <clears throat> evocinstitute.org. A lot of scientific correlation. Whoever is doing that website is fabulous. So our healing is happening, not one is stress, a second is this way. Stress is taking out all the, uh, sorry, uh, meditation is taking out all stress-induced diseases by default, just in the default state of meditating, and then having this positive and miraculous mindset that now I've got a great body. I'm walking up and down my home stairs 20 times a day, and then you start doing it a little bit every day to feel that it is true. That's visualization. are receiving that and then they are transforming. They are receiving that and then they are helping the genes produce new proteins to construct new cells wherever that's required. So a great amount of healing happening this way, dear friends. You must read this book, You Are the Placebo. Anybody wanting to improve their health must read this book. There is so much more in terms of to understand this exactly. We have less time. Also, some of it is a little complex to understand. So I don't talk about this here. Now we talked about early in the morning, uh, in the before starting meditation, that all the four states, the sleep state, which is important, 
right? Because you spend a lot of time in the sleep state. So sleep has to be improved. So let's understand that a little bit around how meditation is improving the sleep and how meditation is increasing the energy in the body. Two fundamentals for definitely corporate environment, work environment, anybody for that matter, right? It's good to recollect Always the concepts are good to recollect. So how is meditation improving the energy? One is health and second is energy. Three things. Restful sleep and optimized sleep. One. Second, reduction of thoughts. So, so a lot of energy is conserv uh, conserved. Pretty obvious, isn't it? May not be obvious actually for many people. 20% of the brain energy, or the body energy is through these thoughts. And then if you make this zero, then 20% energy is conserved. An optimal food intake, vegetarian food intake. Let's understand a little bit more in the sleep. <clears throat> so the right side picture, we, we, we saw this picture earlier. The brain waves, a lot is going on around the brain waves. That's why I mentioned that this keep coming up. So right now you are in that beta state of low beta, where you are actively listening in. High beta is a very stressful state. And so we go, the meditation is naturally lowering the brain waves we understood. So one of the reasons the sleep is better is because we are already meditation is lowering the brain waves. Another reason is that cortisol, remember we said cortisol keeps us very alert, very awake in the body, biologically, so that cortisol, that is reduced through meditation because it's removing the stressor. You no longer get stressed with mother-in-law or the son-in-law or daughter-in-law, whatever that is, or your boss, we no longer get stressed with that. And the third one is that higher melatonin level. So there is this chemical is also produced in the pineal gland. It's called the sleep chemical, which is nicely getting produced into a pineal gland, somewhere in the center of all these points. Somewhere in the center, just right below behind this two eyebrows, inside the center. So that pineal gland, uh, melatonin, has a lot of benefits. One of them is the sleep. So it is helping us take go go into a nice deeper sleep so meditation is absolutely optimizing or uh, optimizing the sleep optimization is what less for more more for less whatever that's necessary right that's the word optimize whatever is or exactly needed so meditation is giving us much energy and then the the sleep chemical the sleep this levels of melatonin are 100 to 300 percent increased in meditator's brain and so there is a nice sleep that we can get. And the melatonin is so powerful that it can take us into the deep REM sleep sleeps. And the sleep, uh, there is a mistake here. So this deep REM sleep should not be here. So the delta is the deep REM sleep. And so there is, wait a minute, somebody wants to draw. So the delta state is the deep REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep where we don't have any dreams. Theta state is where you have these dreams. Right. And less sleep is sufficient, so which is why we are gaining a lot of time. And as if you're practicing, if you are waking up in the middle of the night, suddenly mm -hmm. feeling fresh, do not force yourself into another sleep cycle. Instead, read books, meditate more. Utilize that time because that time will be there, friends. The more we meditate, there'll be... It's just that now we, we've just gotten that, okay, I got to get my eight hours sleep. Experiment, right? You have nothing to lose. If you experiment for, say, three weeks, and then slowly then we can say, yes, it's my body is supporting me, uh, sleeping less, and then so I'm still feeling fresh, and then why not, right? Why not take advantage of it? Of course, you're allowed to sleep, and that's the only thing that you want to do. No problem, please go and do. But if you always felt that you have a lot of things to do, and then... Utilize it. So that's sleep. And the last one is on uh, energy. The third factor, right, is one is our energy in the body is conservation because of thoughts. 
because of sleep and then because of the right food intake, right type of food, three things. That's how your body energy is consumed. So thought, we know this factor. So 95% repetitive, 80% negative. So, so much energy is dissipating all the time. Oh, today, oh, yesterday 20 people died in a car accident. I mean, in a bus accident. Total waste of energy, you know that. Oh, so somebody got uh, something in our layout here. Negative and then a thing that does not support in any way. Anyway, we're already taking precautions. So why do you need to worry about what happens to the neighborhood here and there? Just keep thinking about repetitive stuff. This is the single biggest reason that we are also producing the repetitive same thing in the future. Thoughts create reality. So negative thoughts drain that energy, not only mind, uh, the body, but also the mind, right? And so much. So all of this is going down, dear friends, with meditation. So there is so much energy is conserved. And third one is food intake, and it is very important. The food intake is getting optimized. Just the way doctors tell mothers that, no, just let, let the child decide what the child wants. Don't try to force stuff onto, it, onto the child. If that is the case, if the child is able to tell rightly what is required, and then so is the case with the body too. The body will tell us what is required, what is not required. Eat only when we are hungry. Fundamental principle, sleep when you're feeling sleepy, don't force yourself to sleep, don't force yourself to eat because it's one o'clock lunchtime. If you want to listen to the body, then that's how you do. Sorry, but if there's anyone who has a fixed regime, I'm sorry about this, but then if you want to listen to the body, so that because the body is telling us, then that's what to eat to the hunger level. Yeah, Can I mute, uh, please? Timeless letters. So meditation is helping us reducing cravings because I talked about this feel good factor in one of the newsletters yesterday. Because all these feel good chemicals are there, and so craving is also making us feel good. So because there's lack of control, and so you're trying to go after and something that is available and eat more and more and more. You know, one of the reasons for obesity is that you know we we, we are so stressed, we're so stressed. And it is there, of course, one with the people just eat, eat, eat because the craving is there. One reason for it, but many other reasons for it. But even that obesity gets reduced meditation. But the cravings go down because that feel good factor is already there. You don't feel like lack of control because it's already making, something is making you feel good. The so lack of control is subdued of the life. And meditation is making us eat optimally because again, body is giving us a signal. And then so we are being alert, being mindful, so we are eating uh, whatever it is that uh, you, you feel. You know, eat at 80% full, that Japanese uh, thing. I love that concept. When I read Ikigai, they tell you, you know, they read, they're eating 80% full, right? So they're always keeping something there. But eat to the what is required. And digestion is happening pretty well. We've understood this as the stress is uh, shutting down various systems, including digestion system. And then now, when stress is not there, so digestion system is working normal, so as a result, so you've got an easy digestion going, right? So I'm talking about in the context of energy in the body. If the digestion is there, then you know that no, perfectly it's all metabolism is happening so beautifully, so then energy is there. Otherwise, you know, you feel the lethargic, right? The food is there, it cannot consume, it cannot digest it. It's so lethargic, right? So there's no energy. We feel lazy, if we can't move. By the time 3 o'clock, we feel so sleepy. So increased absorption and de-addictions and all of these friends are uh, a way of uh, the food intake becomes optimal. And then what is the right food intake? And we say plant-based diet, vegetarian diet. Various reasons are there. Compassionate grounds, of course, is there. Economical grounds. A billion dollars is spent on just promoting a a non-vegetarian burger product that comes out, just a billion dollars. Think of how much of money is going on what it is at the end of the day. So that uh, individual health, indiv um, amazing amount of statistics are there in individual health for vegetarians versus non-vegetarians in terms of the amount of uh, uh, the percentage increase in uh, various diseases that are possible, susceptible to a body which is eating 
Many, many researches are there. Many, many. It will be amazing if you just open up and then look at it. Individual health. If you felt the proteins are not there, go figure. Elephant, horse, gorilla, the strongest, heaviest, fastest animals are vegetarians. They're not eating meat. Well, produce, they, 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 of course, you would have seen, uh, we will definitely post a book around uh, vegetarian diet and some of the calories and protein intakes and for just to understand in case you've not understood. That's a myth that vegetarian diet does not have it. Vegetarian diet has everything. And I found personally when I became a vegetarian, then I found that one of the core reasons why I'm able to be very healthy is because uh, of this diet. And then two, I became, naturally became very sharp in memory. I noticed it significantly, very sharp in memory. Correlation, exactly, I don't know, but suddenly became very sharp. Environmental impact is significant. I couldn't believe that a vegetarian diet, you know, we are, we are producing so much produce, and in that produce, 71% is fed to cattle, and the cattle to produce meat, 71% is produced to, uh, given to cattle. And then if the 71% is fed to People, there are 40 million people are dying of hunger in the world. Can we not think about that? There is so much of inefficiency. In, there is so much of resource consumption on the environment. Water, 1 is to, I believe, 50. Or maybe 1 is to 150. That means to produce a, a pound of beef versus a pound of a vegetable diet, one is taking that 150 times more and then another is just one liter means 150 more. Either 50 or 150, I don't exactly remember. There's so much water is consumed just for this. So much of land is grazed, I mean, so much of land is uh, deforested because you've got to put now a lot more, right? And again, that is that uh, wheat, uh, one pound of wheat versus one pound of beef. It's one is to 20 in terms of the amount of land usage required so that you can you can produce that punt of gray, uh, uh, cattle feed and so then you got to feed the cattle and also get it. 20 times more deforestation is happening. Environmental is just amazingly, amazingly uh, uh, impacted. Think about this uh, and then more importantly we're becoming so healthy with vegetarian diet, dear friends. So healthy. Herbivorous, carnivorous, you heard this argument. We have a short intestine and we have a long intestine, whereas this uh, lions and tigers have short intestine. Ours is multi-feet, right? More than 25 feet, theirs is three to four feet. So the food has to go through the whole pipe and it takes a long time to digest. Meat is such a tough one that it takes some uh, short in intestines and it just goes in and comes out, whereas for us it just be in the stuck in it and that's where a lot of lethargy comes. And of course, last time, Ramani sir mentioned about it, the, 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 the emotional outburst of these animals is absolutely coming into the food and then we're taking in. That is coming in. It is absolutely coming in. If a heart transplant and transform the energy from one person to another, memories, and then you have to understand that there is somebody, some, some animal's body has transformed from one place to another. It's carrying that emotional things in it. It's coming in. So various reasons, dear friends, of why vegetarian intake is a beautiful, beautiful thing for the body. And of course, it is strengthening our health significantly. And, and so meditation in general is ensuring that we are going into optimal food intake. With that, we come to the end of our 10th day session, dear friends. We learned how health is improved. We're learning how energy in the body is improved significantly. And then we learn how the memory powers. So physical body and then about the memory. Together, if this is constructed, body and mind is become better, sound. Then, of course, we perform better. And that's something that we learn on our Friday master class. And to close... 
Ramnish are still there. So I think, sir, your, your concept was so well taken. So would you like to talk about that again? Yes, Chandra, this is something which uh, I've been sharing with a lot of my friends. A very single and strong uh, proponent for vegetarianism. All of us uh, have this experience whenever we just walk on the road or somewhere and suddenly there is a honk, big honk of a car or a lorry and sound and then suddenly what happens, whole body, the blood gushes up and you feel uh, sort of shocked. That's because of uh, adrenaline, the creation of adrenaline about which you have spoken so much. Now, similarly, what happens in the animals? We have seen the slaughterhouses. Those animals which are taken to the slaughterhouses, they have a sense of, uh, a, a sense, they, knew, they, they get to know that they're going to be killed. The moment they are taken closer to the slaughter blade, they try to resist it so much. I've seen it myself. They resist it because they know they're going to be killed. They're full of fear all over. And when that bang comes in, the whole body, that animal's body secretes gallons and gallons of adrenaline. And all this adrenaline, they go and settle in the various muscles, the muscles of the animals, which people love and take it. And this is what is being prepared and given as non-vegetarian food. Imagine when we take such a food, we are consuming so much of ready-made adrenaline. It's so bad for our body. Definitely, vegetarianism is the future of this world. There is no way we can think of killing animals and having the food. There is so much. So much. As a doctor, I can tell you, vegetarian food is so healthy. So healthy, easy to digest. And it has also got a very positive influence on the mind of the individual. As you rightly said, how your memory has improved when you stopped on vegetarianism and came back to vegetarian. So definitely the world should switch over. And that is the way perhaps we're going to see more and more people enjoy the benefits of this wonderful life God has given to all of us. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. As a medical doctor, always it's great to hear and more so from you who have really traveled the world, you've seen it all and they're making such an impact to so many millions of lives. Thank you so much, sir. So we, we hear the closing comments from Karthik and sir, from Mysore. So we dynamic have, in traveling. Yes, sir. Uh, Chandra, another beautiful day of meditation, of course, getting better day by day and very powerful argument in favor of vegetarianism. Let us not make our stomach graveyard of animals. And um, all arguments you put forward by you and Dr. Ramani, and it's a lot of contribution for now, so I can read it. But I don't know whether it will be appropriate or not. There is a documentary by the BBC on what happens. Maybe it's a bit too shocking to some people. You must consider whether that should be screened one day. It's just a very short five minutes or something. After that, I can tell you, nobody will go for the meeting meet again. Many children, many children, in fact, you know, um, I can take my own grandchildren in Australia. They have become not only that, they have become vegans. They also speak about that in their schools. In Australian schools, they all say how they should not eat meat and vegetarianism. And vegan restaurants have become more popular nowadays, you know. Only sentiment and religious, whatever it is, but apart from the purely from point of health also. Physical health, emotional health, every point of view. The future, as Dr. Ramani said, is vegetarian. We want to save the planet. More and more people should become vegetarians. I'm sure it may be after a lot of disaster, they will learn it. But it's also happening everywhere. The awareness has come. And uh, one, org one organization which boldly 
promotes vegetarianism is VSSM movement of Patanjali. There are many spiritual organizations. They build... Some are hesitant to talk about it because they may lose their followers. After being convinced that vegetarianism is good, here I admire Patanjali and all of you for the courage with which you are promoting vegetarianism because that is the only way you can save not only the individual health, the planet as a whole also. Let's take uh, as a business leader, as a successful business leader, I also want to hear from SVB, so has been also a vegetarian all throughout before we close the yeah. session, sir. Yes. I think it's also that myth that business leaders in business, we're okay, talking about... I will hear session. him and then leave. Yes, yes sir. Uh, good morning to everybody. Good morning to the Ark and Chandra. I've been a vegetarian for more than 40 years. I run uh, small, small diaries in uh, all my, uh, you know, factories, uh, college and other thing. I love animals. I go on adding to new varieties of domestic, uh, you know, uh, species of uh, cows in my diary. And uh, you know, about vegetarianism, there's no doubt. We don't need to eat uh, non-vegetarian at all because I have been uh, uh, eating such uh, non-vegetarian food 40, 50 years back, but I stopped that. And after that, I have been always feeling much better in my uh, health conditions. Now, regarding meditation, and uh, now off late, I find after you complete your meditation part, I am so blissful. In fact, I don't want to break it. Maybe I would like to continue even for an hour, that uh, feeling of blissness blissfulness. And I think, uh, do you take it that blissfulness is also a meditation part of uh, the whole uh, process? Yes, sir. Like from, uh, yes, sir. Uh, it is the final state of transcendental states where you are. Uh, only one more point to Chandra. May I add one more point? Chandra? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're just completing uh, this See, unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, what is happening today, the ignorance, you know, of the parents, they think, you know, giving meat, fish and all that to the children only makes them healthy. The children who are reluctant to eat, they force them to eat, telling, no, no, they'll become strong. You'll become, this is another stupidity. If you eat fish, you become more intelligent. I am sorry to say that. Even educated people, enlightened people. I see, why do you force the children? They don't like it. The parents are vegetarian. Somebody told them, you know, they only become more intelligent, become strong. This is... Unfortunate tendency I'm seeing even in educated people. They force the children to become non vegetarians. That's a very sad thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. That is, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very, very good point. Very, very good point. The parents with out of interest and love, and then we keep uh, doing this, but I think it's got to be individual experience. So thank you so much for bringing that point. Yes, sir, SVB, Bye. sir. Bye bye. It's great. Thank you Welcome. for your. Uh, Point, sir. Yes, meditation is taking us a bliss state, and vegetarianism is making us very, very healthy, compassionate, and everything feeds into the other. We are more vegetarian, more compassionate. Only then we can become one with others. Prima facie, how is it possible otherwise? It's not possible because on the one we are taking it onto the dining table, another you are saying is my pet, holding into your hand. They're two different. I mean, it's just contradictory. No, if the children are taken to the dairies where they will go see the, you know, cows and all the calves. Then, uh, then if they play with the calves, then they will understand the importance of, you know, not having uh, any non-vegetarian food. I think the one way to make the children to understand the, the happiness with which they can enjoy by playing with the calves is uh, another thing could be thought of by the schools. Yes, sir. I think some ideas, maybe we'll have to plan an experiential uh, thing of this for people. But I'm sure it's happening. It's happening. On average, about 50,000 people in the world are becoming vegetarian per week by a master who's done some research and written it. I think it's a small number, but it's got to become bigger and bigger. It's going to happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much um, for your time. Beautiful comments by a, a highly accomplished multi-business leader, and a and, and, uh, um, um, uh, medical doctor come running a non-profit foundation. And then, of course, uh, Karthikeyans are a, a government well, official and a significant uh, accomplished leader. 
all I was talking about was attendance, dear friends. There's got to be something. So if anybody's still thinking about it, it is a time to become a vegetarian at once. So thank you all, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.